I see a live. I see a live on Facebook up there. All I right. think that means something. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Here we go. Shall I play the intro again or no? Oh, I think sure. you should. Yeah. Yes. It's so cool. Okay. Everyone needs to see it. <laughs> yes, I agree. Okay. I have no idea where I just went. Give me one more minute, everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Like I said, okay. this is a nice laid back yeah. show. We yes, are just. It is. Okay. I kind of feel like I'm sitting in the back of the bus and the driver keeps going, where's the road? <laughs> yes. That's a good, good analogy. All right. Videos. Let's do this okay. one. I wanted to send yes. this. Hopefully. I was going to share it, but I cannot find it. So. Nice. I love this. Woo, and there we were. <laughs> Okay, now. No <laughs> yes, now we Welcome, are Welcome, everyone. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and seeing, seeing us tonight on Facebook and then later on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Wherever Correct. else you want to look for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll put it on, on Spreaker as well. Yes. And um, I'll get there. I'll get it all caught up. I'm sorry. Wendy is good. Um, it, it's been it's been a trying few weeks and yes I'm has. catching back up I've caught my breath <laughs> feeling yeah. a little better <laughs> I'm really hoping everybody else out there is staying well and you know wearing your mask keeping away from people <laughs> I, feel like, I, I feel like I want to wear a cape when I get out in public I'm like no no <laughs> get away <clears throat> Oh, I had dramatic. this woman come up to me in the store the other day and she just kind of was going to ask me a question and, and I don't know what she was thinking, but I almost like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, ma'am, I'm sorry. You've got to kind of keep your distance. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, <laughs> because I don't know what she was thinking. You know, she was just asking, I don't even know why she was trying to ask me if I knew where the cough surf was. Uh, <laughs> do yeah. I look like I know where the cough surf is? <laughs> and right. then when she asked me that, I got really paranoid. <laughs> right, right. It's like the one thing you don't want to be asked. <laughs> Why do you need it? <laughs> oh, but it has been a really trying time for everybody. I know, um, you know, you just kind of, your nerves are a little on edge and, and people who are, you know, essential workers are having to get out there and mm -hmm. mess with these people who just are a little argumentative and um you know yeah everyone's frustrated at this yes. point right frustrated. And, right. Yes. and if, right. it's, if it's not the raw nerves it's the monotony there's just so mm -hmm. many challenges this year right and... yeah there really are yes <laughs> so yeah we are going to try this weekend to take a trip like I said, it's going to be a, a car drive there is going to be a group of us going but we're all going to be separate taking our own cars. We are going to meet in outdoor places. Um, we're first going to meet in a cemetery in um, uh, Wallace, Idaho. Or no, actually Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We're meeting in a cemetery so um, <laughs> <laughs> so we can spread out. And this sounds it's supposed like to be a very, sorry very cool this cemetery sounds like a uh, <laughs> like the start of a very bad movie <laughs> yes <laughs> you know that's kind of how we, we roll <laughs> and then though we're going to go out to um butte montana and um there are two brothels that we are going to um yes brothels. <laughs> Hurry, finish the story <laughs> <laughs> two ex brothels i should say yes. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are supposed to be haunted and we are going to get to investigate those places but it's all going to be masks um you know we're all going to be wearing masks and we're not gonna be close to each other so we have two different places we can spread out in and social then, distancing from the ghosts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the the ghosts. I don't mind cozying up to the ghosts because I feel safer with them. Mm, they can hear you. <laughs> yes. 
And then the next night, we are going to be investigating the old Montana State Prison in Deer Lodge, Montana. Oh, and uh, so we get to spread out quite a bit there. And uh, they're going to leave us completely alone. So we get the whole place to ourselves all night long. And nice. That's so great that you're making it work. In, we're going to try. Situation. That's, that's so great. I would just be devastated if, you know, somebody in our group actually caught something. So, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, I got the, the wipes, the gloves, mm -hmm. the Lysol. I have the UV cleansing light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> yeah, I have it all. So very that, good. <laughs> yes. So we'll probably do a few live, uh, live streams from from one of the places and so i'll try to do one on mystic moon too so people if they can turn tune in and see now what's really interesting is in in butte the brothel one of the brothels that we're going to investigate is the dumas brothel mm. and this was built as a brothel it wasn't just a hotel that they converted into a brothel this was actually built as a brothel when you walk into this place and i got to investigate it about eight or nine years ago but when you walk into this place on the main floor there are rooms and all the rooms have these huge windows that you can look in and see what you want to buy basically oh so then they have the curtains that you pull if they are occupied so it's uh it was built in the i think 1860s Very 1870s so it's fascinating yeah but we it's got some funny. interesting vps last time too so Ooh. i'm excited to see what we get oh cool yeah i can't wait to hear how it goes nice i was thinking when you were talking about the wipes and the masks and everything it's usually you know uh in the past forms of protection on a ghost hunt is holy water, holy relics. Right, <laughs> yes, right. now, yep. now we have masks and gloves. <laughs> I just hope the ghosts don't have an aversion to all the cleaning supplies. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Which yeah. keeps the ghosts away. Who knew? Yes. You never Blend know. dust. Yeah. <laughs> I love your glass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like well, is that a martini that is or is this, that is, water? <laughs> this is a water glass now okay. <laughs> i won't tell I know you it's a water glass. vodka <laughs> Woo! i know. brought my glass uh tonight it says drink up witches oh, I love <laughs> that. Oh, cute. <laughs> really cute. Oh. just the uh yeah some something or other <laughs> So Jennifer, yes. how have you been the last time that we, you've been on our show? We've, oh gosh, you know, right? so much has changed in the world. I know. Um, yeah, last time I was on, it was uh, me and Maxwell talking about Odd Tonic, our paranormal podcast. Which we absolutely love. Thank you. Absolutely. And, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Warms my heart. I can't, I can't not hear that enough, right? <laughs> um I think since then, um, the the pandemic has um, impacted us personally rather hard, not in any kind of tragic way. It's just, um, you know, people have had to adjust their lifestyles and it has certainly piled on a lot more personal responsibilities that I can't really get into um, because of uh, quarantine and everything. And um, so really we're kind of, we're on hiatus right now from the podcast, but uh, it is still very much uh, a dear, uh, dear project to our hearts. It's our passion project. And, um, you know, we're, we are slowly trying to figure out inventive ways to um, keep interacting with um, our listeners and all of our friends we've made online due to the podcast. And we, we have two episodes um, scripts that we're working on right now. We are trying to um, produce a couple episodes this summer and we're, we're in a holding pattern like a lot of people just, just wait and see um, how things go in the world. But um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at right now. We're trying to, you know, we're, we're talking about doing um, 
just some more casual live broadcast things like that instead of the the whole shibial production value that uh, we really um, want to put in a tonic and it's just it's the point where <clears throat> just personally that um we we are, we're not finding ourselves with a lot of free time for passion projects and um and because of that like um you know <clears throat> everyone needs a paycheck right now and if we're we're diverting time to the podcast that's time that we're not getting paid at our day jobs <laughs> and so I there's understand. that delicate yeah. delicate balance of um trying to make it work whereas you know before the pandemic we it was you know a, a project of love and it was something you know we sacrificed our free time to do and we just have less free time right now so i mean mm. I have every faith in the world that things will level out and things are always in constant change and flux. And when you are dedicated to making something happen, when things shift, it'll happen. So that's true. Yeah. That's kind of the state of the union for Autonic right now. <laughs> yes. And I do have to say for um, our listeners who have not checked out Odd Tonic, um, you can also just do a search for them on YouTube and you can find some of their episodes, which is, you know, very quick yeah. um, and everything. And once you listen to one, you're not going to want to stop at one. You're going to want to listen to them all. So thank you. And we do have a library. We do have a library of, of uh, archive shows. So it's not like um, you, you listen to one and then you got to wait or anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Probably by the time you get to our library, we'll have <laughs> some new episodes out. So <laughs> Yeah, but um, oddtonicsociety.com, you can find us there. Our mm -hmm. YouTube channel is um, youtube.com slash C slash uh, oddtonic, right? I think it is. It's either oddtonic or oddtonic society, but uh, one of those two. I think it's oddtonic. I think it is too, but yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, there's just bats and dust flying out of my head. It's been too long. <laughs> oh, I understand that, believe me. <laughs> Now mm. there's a, a, a Rick Hoover, is that right? Hoover mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in chat. And he's saying it's still a very active community and oh, yes. that you are super fantastic. Oh, that thank you, true. Rick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rick is one of the dear friends we have made really through the podcast. And, um, and that's the sort of thing, just the community that we have encountered and built and all interact with that to me it makes everything worth it and uh I just cherish it I cherish it greatly so I appreciate that we still have that pretty much daily connection uh with people and um like I said we're behind the scenes we're really trying to um get things going because um we just we just love to share and we love to we love to contribute um, the entertainment, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, share, share topics that we're just passionate about, you know. Well, um, shall we introduce you actually, in <laughs> case some of our people don't know who you are? We you know, that might be really in. nice. <laughs> Once I finally got it going, I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> hey, we're here. Bye. <laughs> <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and thank you, Rick, because uh, getting all of these links and, and doing this too is is starting to uh, overwhelm my senses. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All Just right. one thing at a time. Yeah. The evening mm -hmm. is new. Don't don't turn out already. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Do you want me to read? Um... Yes, please. Oh, I, I, that's right. I wrote something. <laughs> I did. Oh. <laughs> I will read. If you don't know about Jennifer. Um, Jennifer Page grew up with fairies dancing in her head and the notion that subtle magic is all around us. So true. Uh, everything <laughs> is alive, growing, and connected. She loves celebrating what it means to be a part of this world and sharing the connections we all have together. She is co-creator and co-host of the paranormal podcast, Odd Tonic as well as owner of The Forest Parlor, which offers divination, divination, sorry, I cannot talk. La, 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 la. Oh, I threw in big words. <laughs> <laughs> divination <laughs> readings and nature energy healing work. Yes. Jen Jennifer is a master level Reiki healer and green witch. 
She lives in the woods of the Pacific Northwest with her spooky partner, Maxwell, and their black cat, Amulet. <laughs> so I, I do have to know, what is a green witch? I don't think I've ever heard of a green witch. Oh, well. That's just me. Know, Wendy probably knows all about everything, but I just, you, you know, know me. I could, <laughs> Sorry. I, could add, I could add additional labels, but for my bio, I keep it simple. Um, I could definitely say I'm a, a solitary, eclectic green witch with a focus in divination and healing. But I would say a green witch is uh, a witch who uh, really has an affinity for nature and under just thinking. the connection with the elements and just the energy around us and the world we live in. And it's kind of... Um, that's what everything revolves around. And, you know, they're in, in contrast, not in contrast, but in comparison, you might have more of a cosmic witch who is very into astrological things and what the planets are doing and, and what's in retrograde right now. Or um, um, they're, you know, I say green witch because it's nature. You've got white witches who are very much into, you know, the, the white um aspects of of magic you know we've all heard of black magic there's gray witches who you know just walk that fine line of you know uh chaotic neutral i would call them maybe <laughs> so there you know there are different types and i'm not one who to be big on labels mm -hmm. but i know that labels can be um a great thing for other people to feel to like um, yeah that they they're they know where you're coming from or or how to take you um so i'm i'm definitely happy to uh settle into the green witch camp and uh say that yeah i'm there i'm, I'm working you know i love working with um plants and herbs and crystals and you know following the uh seasonal cycle of things um and, and that sort of thing. And, and just drawing my energy from uh, the earth and just being a bit of a caretaker for, for life and um, just feel it, it's just something that really resonates with me. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I don't want to hijack the show, but I figured I would bring, uh, show and tell components, right? Please, hijack um, away. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, one thing that I do through the forest parlor is I have online meetups and we meet over Zoom and uh, normally we'll meet over the new moon so that we can uh, set goals and intentions um, oh, that's during, really nice. during the new moon. And then we'll meet for the full moon to check in, see how we're doing, recharge each other and stuff. Um, I also plan on doing uh, seasonal meetups as well we have one august 1st for the first harvest of the year but monday was the last um just this past monday was the new moon and i i've brought some components from uh some of the things that we talked about in the meeting overall mostly it's really about getting together and connecting with people and supporting each other and we're friends right and it's not like it's heavy on ceremony or anything like that but on monday uh, for the new moon, for the group, I brought in some uh, green adventuring to be with us. Mm -hmm. Green adventuring is great for the heart chakra. It's great for uh, balancing your heart chakra. If you ever feel that uh, you have an overactive heart chakra, you would experience things like um, you can't say no, you, you're a people <laughs> pleaser, you, you're constantly... Um, just craving that connection or, or feeling like um, you need to give, give, give. And um, when you have a more balanced chakra, you, you understand that it, there's a give and flow and, and you can trust, you can trust in love, right? It's, it's not a, ooh, is it right or is it wrong and overthinking or overguessing. And um, green adventuring is also good for um, prosperity and abundance because uh, a lot of times, Abundance is tied to uh, the subconscious idea that you're not deserving of abundance or um, you're, you're, you're being greedy or something like that, or you, you're just not worth it. And green of the dream, if you believe in crystal work, um, vibrates on that frequency of restoring those balances of things. And 
it's um it's good to um promote abundance and welcome abundance into your life and when you start welcoming things in you tend to uh you tend to attract them right it's so, true so I brought in green adventuring. I also <clears throat> brought in uh, fire quartz. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> which is really good for transmuting negative energy into positive energy and finding that balance there. I felt that just with the new moon and the way that people have been frazzled lately, that it would be good to bring that into the meeting, as well as smoky quartz, which is said to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, it also, smoky quartz is great at dispersing fears, lifting depression, relieving stress and anxiety. So I thought, who doesn't need that, right? Yes, right. <laughs> Should and I then swallow the- that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> is it, would that help better? <laughs> no, probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> not for externally used only. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll keep that. <laughs> and the last one I brought in was Apache Tears which mm-hmm. is great for protection, grounding, it's comforting, it's soothing. Uh, it's also a great grieving stone if you happen to be someone who is going through the grieving process because uh, it is a very soothing, calming uh, influence to have. So those were elements that I brought to the new moon meeting and, and we talk about them like that. So you, you learn a little bit about crystals and um, if something resonates with you, you know, um, or I always am fascinated with timing of things, right? If you happen to just be in the position where this is presented to you, it's great to just explore like, wow, that's exactly what I needed right now. And, and how did that happen? And synchronicities mm-hmm. like that are always really fun. So. Yeah, that's some some of what we do at uh, the New Moon um, meetups. Um, we also did a, a protection blessing spell. I have those components here too, if you guys want to go through that. But oh, we I'd love to. to. Really? Awesome, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I I I have missed both of your of your oh, moon. It's- that they, deals they, but i wanted to be there oh great i just didn't realize the date it just yeah <laughs> woo <laughs> i know and then like when i or you know i i post something on the forestparlor.com but at the same time um because i found the facebook events um people weren't getting all the messages even even though i post in the forest parlor group you know we're all so busy i have right. to send an alarm on my phone to tell me that it's happening you know so I can only (laughs) imagine how everyone else feels (laughs) so yes okay so for the new moon Mm -hmm. it is a great time to uh set intentions um so I would ask the two of you is there anything any goal or intention that you want to set for the month or anything that you want to get rid of I have a list. No. Okay. <laughs> How much time do we have? Yes. It, it's called Schindler's List. Um, oh, Schindler's List. oh no, Wendy. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Sorry. <That's funny. laughs> oh my um, gosh. Yeah, that movie was on today. I can't watch it. I, no. I watched it oh, once no. and that was enough for me. It was one of those movies that's incredible and I'm so yes. glad I saw it, but I never want to see it again. Exactly. I don't think I've yeah. sobbed so oh, much yeah. in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, yes. <laughs> um, yes. The, uh, Jacob says he can't stay for the full show, but wanted to show support. And he says hello to all of us. And oh, we miss hello, Jake. Jacob. <laughs> He's actually moving. So that is why he is, no. um, he has a lot on his yes. plate right now from yes. work and to his move and okay. his puppies. We'll, we'll excuse it. <laughs> <laughs> so we and Jake. there are a whole lot of people in here um rick is saying his wife has been enjoying them uh yes. she made him an and amazing his... charm bag to help with his head oh, and nice. it seems to be working oh good uh, and gina powell um jennifer and i have synchronicities so often um she always <laughs> says or posts something anytime i need it oh, that's really <laughs> nice mm-hmm. gina's my gal <laughs> <laughs> all right well why don't we write down because i've got little sheets of paper and stuff let's put down a uh, a good move for jake okay 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 yes all right 
Yes, we want everything to go smoothly for him. Because if anyone knows me, what we're going to do is we're going to put spell components into my mini cauldron and we're going to burn these because I'm very big into burning everything. (laughs) (laughs) So this is Jake's. So June, um, do you have anything that you want to contribute? Oh my gosh. Well, how about just something simple for a safe, um, our safe trip? Safe trip. Yes. Yes. Safe trip. That everything goes safe and smoothly and we're all well. Yeah. Good journey. <laughs> Stay and well. Speed. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I'm surprised I didn't that didn't pop in my head for you. Wow. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, how about you? Um a little luck in getting all of the forms for uh some things I'm I'm working paperwork. towards. Paperwork. Yes, paperwork, getting it filled out and then having a successful outcome. Opening doors. Yes. Yes, please. Open Mm -hmm. those doors. Yes. Okay. Uh, Really quickly, is there anyone in the chat who has anything that they want to add that if they weren't in the new moon meetup on Monday? All right. Anybody? Speak now or forever hold your intentions. (laughs) Let's see. Um, There's a delay, right? Just a little bit of one, but it's not much that I can tell anyway. Um, Okay, that's great. Okay, everybody, we're doing a new moon uh, enchantment. uh, Yeah, blessing. Blessing, yes. Yeah, for anyone yeah, mm -hmm. who has something that they, an intention they want to work on or something they want to attract in their life, or even if, because, you know, the new moon was just now, if if you have something that you just want to release and get rid of, um, Mm -hmm. that's always a good thing, too. Spiritual guidance for myself and my niece. That's Gina. Okay. Awesome, Gina. Mm -hmm. Um, Renee or Brenda, you got anything? Jake? Ross? I I thought I saw you pop on earlier. (laughs) Gina. We can put something in there for Ross, just that things start going smoothly for him and he starts hearing um some i guess he'd say good news let's just say some abundance yes oh there yeah lots of abundance rick says memory access and retention well we could all use that (laughs) i would like that too (laughs) yes um uh sarah uh general positive vibes i think i'm running out of paper (laughs) oh sorry Um, Jake says he would say an easy move so he doesn't strangle his spouse. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. Um, we have him down. It was the first thing I wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. My friend Brenda, uh, take and spend more time for myself and interests. Oh, yes. Self care is very important. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. And it's the first thing that goes out the window. We immediately forget about it. Yes. And it is so important because who else is there for us to say, hey, what do I need? What do I need right now? You know, mm-hmm. we can have the most loving partner in the world, but they're dealing with their work and, you know, their bad night of sleep and, and whatever else is going on. And, and just like you are, and it's just so easy to just not check in. And, uh, it's something I very strongly promote is just yes and it's something that they just don't teach culturally that um you have to look out for yourself and that you're deserving and you're worthy and um and it's important you know it's very important yes it is indeed so well, we, we've got several people in here. Yay, this is so nice. much fun. Nice. <laughs> it's because we're burning stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Everybody raise a flame. Oh, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> yep. Like, huh? All right, let's see if I can get this candle going. The wick is kind of messing with me. I hate when my do that. Oh, I know, right? They bend over and then they get stuck in the wax. And mm-hmm. <laughs> my light. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow. June is glowing. Okay. Oh, June, you're we'll like. Stop the... that. Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> we'll stop so, that. <laughs> I do have some. Uh, I brought basil from 
my own home garden for a, a blessing. Uh, basil is really great for blessings and for protection. And I have a lemon balm for drawing in love and healing and success. I'm putting that in my little cauldron here. I also have rosemary blossoms that are dried as well as, um, you know, the the more traditional green that you're used to. Rosemary mm -hmm. is great for removing negative vibrations, especially nice. for better health <clears throat> protection. Uh, it's great for warding. It's great for psychic detox and uh, purification. And Mental acuity. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have jasmine essential oil that I'm, ooh, I'm putting in here for happy, ooh, ooh, happiness, <laughs> love, and money. <laughs> See what happens there. Nice dose, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Someone's Whoosh. saying someone needs that. <laughs> I think so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to smell like jasmine for a month. Ooh, just watch your <laughs> eyebrows. <so> yeah. <laughs> there are worse things. Okay. Are, and yes. <laughs> um, I also have some ginger here Ooh. to put in. A ginger is great for love and prosperity. And just like cinnamon, it adds uh, that uh, it quickens a spell. It, it the, Oomph. and ginger kind of brings the fire as well it boosts that fiery energy to anything you're doing as well so i've got all those things in this very jasmine smelling cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that happened like... to me earlier too only it was mint but that's okay it helps my nose <laughs> nice. yeah okay and so mm -hmm. let's see i have uh wendy's here good luck with paperwork and opening doors here, i'm gonna switch put this in my cauldron. Uh, Brenda, self-support. Sarah wants overall general good vibes. Can never have enough of that. <laughs> See, safe travel for June mm -hmm. for her trip. And, Please. and some uh, good EVPs. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Rick is doing some memory work. This cauldron is going quite big. So <laughs> I'm just dropping them in at this point. Ross, abundance for Ross. Okay. Please. Good move for Jake. And Gina and her niece, some spiritual guidance. going on and then just for the new moon i said into the smoke i release all energy that doesn't serve me all fears that limit me i welcome love happiness and success i am ready and i am deserving so there we go fantastic that was awesome yeah mm -hmm. so we yeah. usually do that at the end of our little socializing and stuff. And I don't know, I feel so good after our meetups. Like we all contributed something. We probably let something go and, you know, to do a little blessing at the end, nothing, you know, nothing stodgy or too ceremonial or anything, but it's just, it's just fun to um, contemplate things, put a pin in it and, uh, you know, go forward thinking, you know, with a new mindset that, uh, we're all here for each other and uh, we, we all hear each other and um, just, yeah, it's just, it's just a great energy boost. It really is. It's very lovely. That's really nice. Yes, like it home. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, the moon is going to start waxing. <clears throat> and for those who aren't used to uh, lunar work, uh, think of it this way. Um, <clears throat> the moon is going from a new moon to the full moon, right? And in that process, it's waxing. So it's like dipping a candle. You're you're dipping a wick into wax. And every time you pull it up or put it down, it's it's has another coat, so it's building. And so uh, from the new moon to the full moon is when you are building on a goal and you and you have an intention for it, right? And so that's the period that we're in right now. It's just a period of growth and 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 work. And then cool. um yeah, it's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Rick says, uh, thank you, Jen. Even smelt smoke 
like in his spirit nose. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> the best kind. That's, right. <laughs> That's wonderful. Excellent. Well, so, Jen, um, oh, go ahead. Go, no, please go ahead, Jen. Oh, I was just going to say with, with all the um, negativity that's going on in the world right now, because there are a lot in so many different directions, mm-hmm. and everything, what advice can you give people or what, what are some things that people can do to, I guess you'd say maybe elevate their mood a little more, you know, not just, you know, with the crystals, but maybe just, yeah, what I are understand. some things that people can, cause I mean, you know, honestly, it's like, you know, I've stopped watching the news for it's one heavy. thing mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good. and, uh, you know, most of my, you know, I'm really lucky that, uh, most of my friends, you know, they are very positive people, you know, I, I, I mean, most, mostly, you know, I don't get a lot of, um, negative posts and things mm-hmm. like that, but, uh, but you know, what are some spiritual things and, or well, that people can do? This is definitely something that I think about daily, right? Because it's all, it's on our minds. And the way I see it, um, we see this with trends in, in society and culture a lot, right? We, we swing hard one way and then we have to swing hard the other way just to find the happy medium where, where we can be more moderate and, and be happy, right? Because um, when something pushes you, you have to push back just as hard right and um, the way I see it is there's a lot a lot of positive things that are going on right now but it's a painful process because of this pendulum shift of of how mindsets and, and and everything works and but I think you know the things I see I see good work and I know I know it's alarming and it's painful and there's some hard lessons in there because there's so much resistance. And um, the way I see it is we're seeing a lot of um, resistance to reality right now. <laughs> and uh, that's, just that's a really good. I like that. <laughs> and, the problem, to reality. Right. and yes, as humans, we think I know what reality is, but in truth, there's a lot of times in life when we don't accept what has happened to us. I can't believe someone broke up with me. I can't believe I lost my job. And you sit there and you fight it, right? And that causes double double suffering um, because you're, you're going through that period of denial and resistance and, and frustration and you're banging your head against the wall. Like, how can this be? How can this be? When in truth, when we can get to a point where we can accept a situation, that's when you can start working with it and making things better. And I think we're still at that tipping point where um, there are just, you know, because there is a lot of things in reality that are understandably not wanting to be accepted because they're terrifying, they're scary, mm-hmm. they're they're not what you're used to. And so um, th- those things can be r- really hard to deal with. But if you can look at the bigger picture of, you know, doing your part in, in understanding what's going on and, and the, the media is terrible because it's always reporting on extremes because that's the clicks, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you're, that's the thing you're, you're going to get clicked on. They're going to find that one terrifying circumstance out of everyone who lived their day that day. And that's the thing they're going to report on. And then it magnifies it and you think, oh my gosh, people are being shot you know, for, for wearing a mask at the store, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. And uh, what we have to remember is, you know, there's the global picture with the media. And then there is your own personal life and your personal circle. And you got to check in with yourself and what you're doing and what the actual people you know, what are they doing? And um, how can you work together and that sort of thing? And Social media can be really terrible because um, people really don't self-censor. There's there's Mm. the environment of arguing for arguing's sake or Mm -hmm. even just being braced for an argument so that it just starts readily. And um, it can make things look all the more ugly when if you weren't reading those things and you were focusing on the things you can actually control, like your own life and what your family is doing and how your friends are doing and how you're helping. It's a completely different perspective. 
So there's all of that, right? That's true. <laughs> and um, even if in your own personal life, if you're if you're dealing with uh, hardships or um, worrying about um, next week or next month or where this year is going, it's always best to, um, well, being a green witch, I always love going outside and sitting and you know, looking at the wind in the trees and the birds that are flittering around and, you know, what the sun feels like and just being in that moment because that the moment that we have is the one that we actually have. And when we spend our time worrying about next week or next month, uh, we're missing what we have right now. And we're also so not true. utilizing, we're not utilizing what we have right now. And uh, when we can take that moment and ground and center and, um, you know, we, we all lose our train of thought. We all get lost in our thoughts. We all have our monkey mind and we can catch ourselves and we can always non-judgmentally gently bring ourselves back to the present and, and support ourselves. Like I said, self-support is just so key because if you don't have your own back, you know, you feel like you, you don't have a foundation. And it's true. So to take the time to really uh, look around, be present, calm your thoughts, you know, focus on your breath is always a good thing, you know, in and out. And um, just realizing, you know, check in what is actually, actually going on right now. Right, right now, I'm just sitting in a chair. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's yeah. what's going on. And the rest of, um, what I'm thinking about is just theater of the mind. And then, you know, we, what happens is we, it triggers an emotion and that emotion is so real that our brain has the response of, oh, I need to pay attention. And then it's just this endless cycle of emotion and thought, emotion and thought. And you uh, have to step out of that a little bit and just realize that, oh, I'm taking myself for a ride and, um, you know, just check in. What should I really be feeling? What is really going on? And it's not that we're not feeling valid things. It's just, you know, just checking in and seeing, you know, is this a re reality? Is this a worry? Because how often in life does the, the big worries um, really come into fruition? And, you know, I have had so much worry and anxiety in my life and I look back and everything works out in its own way. And there's a lot of trust in that too. Just, um, you know, giving yourself the, the permission to just say, okay, universe, you know my heart. This is what I want to do. Help me, you know, right. help me see it. And then look for those signs and, and support yourself. And so, yeah, there, it's a big bundle, a big it bundle of, of everything. And, and there it's a crazy year and so many things are coming to light that you know you usually don't have to think about these things so much and it's so in our face and in a way I think I think it could be a very uh, wonderful opportunity for transfer transformation and that if we all take that to heart and work from that space and talk about it that um, we'll, we'll be in a better spot and we'll get there quicker and less painfully. And that's one of the reasons why I, I started the forest parlor is uh, I just wanted a space where we can talk about these things and, and support each other. And, um, you know, I see as much negativity out there as, as anyone else. And I feel like I can't argue with the negativity, but I can put my own positivity out there. And I know there's a big backlash about good vibes only, and it's not about good vibes only. It's it's just about everything else. It's not a refusal or denial of the negativity. It's just what am I going to offer in response to the negativity? And, right. <clears throat> and I want to be there for people, and I I really care, and and everyone deserves everyone deserves support and to be heard and feel like they have connections with someone else. And those things so are true. really, really important to me. 
I know there's, there's a lot of times that I really want to respond to the negativity. Oh yeah. Cause I get so angry and you know, I find <laughs> myself saying, Oh my God, these people, I can't believe it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I start to type something and I'm like, rah, 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 and then I'm like, um, now what's this going to help? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this going to help anything? And then I just delete it and I shut the computer off and I yeah. walk away because right. if I don't, you know, because then if you do type in that response, then you have to deal with the reaction to it. And it's yes. just ongoing. It's just like, this is not worth it to it's me. It's not worth it. Yeah. So. <sighs> yeah. It's exhausting. It's really exhausting. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Chris in the, in the chat there, he says, step outside, breathe, yes. breathe deep. Pause your runaway thoughts if you can. <laughs> yeah. Some of our cases, well, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, turn off your phone. Yes. Step away from the internet. Be in the moment. Yes. Be in the now. Be this in the moment now. will not last. Close your eyes and listen. Yeah. That sound oh, yeah. is the heartbeat of the earth. Oh, wow. like Chris that. is uh, very, very deep and wise. Uh, you know, this from is someone people. up in your area, up mm -hmm. in uh, Hicksville, Missouri, Chris, I'm really impressed at that. <laughs> Hicksville, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing down words about Missouri. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, yep. I know Chris through uh, a couple of great authors and uh, Orlando Sanchez. Mm -hmm. And uh, so get those they're good escapism books just mm -hmm. fantasy oh. and fun and and very good so much laughter <laughs> yes <laughs> and magic and explosions yes. and things you know yes. hellhounds gosh i love a good book Oh, yes. Yeah. And anytime Wendy like suggests books, it's like, I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll read this. And then all of a sudden, then I'm hooked on this whole series. <laughs> yep, <laughs> oh, <well>. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read no. Blood Brother yet, but. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh no, they've been really good. I've been, I've been enjoying, right. enjoying all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, but. Mm -hmm. I have a stack of books. I always have a stack of books. Oh yeah. And yeah, and escapism is good too, you know. As a, you get your mind and, away. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. step and into it, another world and mm -hmm. and just have some fun. Yeah, yeah. That's what I love mm -hmm. about books, like you have to pay attention and yes. Yep. It's great. But <laughs> and then I had another question, but um oh, never yeah. mind. Uh oh. No, it's what? gone. It, okay. it has it has escaped my immediate presence, but it'll come back. <laughs> maybe it'll come back. back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think you know, like I said, with with everything that's going on now and and anxiety, it's just it's, it's just kind of you know getting up to a you know even though a lot of people are getting to stay home, there are a lot of essential workers that are not, and they're having yeah. to get out there every day and. And um, I'm really fortunate, you know, right now that I do, you know, I can stay home and I go into work at least once a week and, and try to get some things done in the office, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate and, yeah. you know, but, it's just. But like the, the, the essential workers who do need to be out there, uh, a great way to support them is to not be out there yeah spreading spreading the virus you know so if you are able to stay home it's boring as all hell but uh <laughs> it's better than um uh, <clears throat> the situation worse so and i mm -hmm. feel for the people who who are out there and you know doing good work and or just even you know having to work at the grocery store and and um putting themselves out there in in the public every day right. mm -hmm. you know to support themselves and their families it's like I'm gonna do my part to to um, be as sanitary as possible. Exactly. <laughs> and I always tell them thank you. Yes, yes. <clears throat> you know. Oh yeah. I never I know... understood. Yeah, I never understood being upset with yeah. a cashier or someone in the first place. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Not <clears throat> unless they were rude and just finally tripped my temper, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I try to be a better person, but every once in a while I get irritated. <laughs> okay. I'm easily irritated, but I don't <laughs> generally get outright angry. <laughs> I'm originally from Chicago and 
And uh, I, I definitely have some uh, Chicago tendencies. And Maxwell's even like, oh, okay, Chicago, not gonna <laughs> But uh, I can also see the point of view. If, if someone's being rude, it's usually because they had a bad day. And yeah, you know, true. So Very I true. try not to take it personally, but. I mean, it's hard not to, especially if you're an empath, if you, okay. you know, are very, you know, em- empathetic with, with mm-hmm. people and. You know, you try not to take it personally, but you, you it's, know, you it's easy to catch that. their mood too. Yes. You know, it's like, you're crabby, I'm crabby now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I have to really watch myself sometimes because I can get crabby very quickly. <laughs> thing. It's just like, I don't Maybe we like should have put that in the pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop June from being crabby, especially on this trip. <laughs> yeah. Don't be, don't be crabby on the road. Ross is going to drive, so I may be let out someplace in the middle of uh, (laughs) Montana. (laughs) (laughs) I hear someone yelling at the moon. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, oh, June. (laughs) (laughs) But I have to say my worst time, though, is when I'm driving. I have very bad road. I I know it's really, yeah, well, it's road rage in a sense where I'm not going to like try to run somebody off the road, even though sometimes, you know, I'm just like, "Mm." right. um, (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, my my language against other people is, is very, you know, very bad. (laughs) And there's always sign language to back you up. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I seem to be very mild mannered, but when I get behind a wheel, I, I have very colorful words for people. Well, it's easy to, um, it's easy to fall into that because like, you know, there's blind spots. There's always someone going a different speed from you. Mm -hmm. Merging seems to be a major issue with people. (laughs) It's like, really? You're going to stop. Turn signals, you know? Yeah, it, it can, it can be something. I try to see it as it is. Now, obviously it's not my road it's not their road it's our road and we're moving together and it's like and sometimes it's my attitude is we're moving together <laughs> <laughs> unless i would say unless you drive in naples italy where the lines <laughs> in the road are just a suggestion oh my God. and the, the lights are just a suggestion <laughs> That's, I would have an ulcer. Yes, I I have to say that that was and you know um that was one of the most bravest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I still have PSD. Yeah. 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 yeah anyway. <laughs> little yeah, yeah, little shell shocked for that. But <laughs> barely I'm it barely in the car anymore like I I said I I think I filled my tank up for the second time since February today, you know, isn't and... yeah, isn't that, you know, I guess, you know, we can look at the positives too, you know, it's like, I'm, I, you know, I, I was going to say, I've been saving so much money in gas mm-hmm. and parking mm-hmm. and restaurants um, were my big, were my big spender restaurants. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so many things. And, you know, I, I keep telling myself that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I've, I've found uh, a new shift in, in spending habits. I think I spend 50 to a hundred dollars a month feeding my backyard animals now. Like I have personal relationships with the squirrels and and the, and the starling jays. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. I I actually had to get a, um, a bird feeder that uh, suction cupped onto my window because I face the window when I'm working oh. and so I had to I was like okay I'm gonna I got a little bird feeder it sits outside my window so I can watch the birds and come up and look at me and mm-hmm. actually if I don't put if I don't fill up the bird food in there I have one that gets on the window and pecks the glass and looks in at me so it <laughs> knows I was so like cute. I think this little thing actually knows <laughs> that I'm the one that fills this up mm-hmm. the squirrel's <laughs> The squirrels definitely know me. In fact, Aww. I I feel bad for any redhead who is walking the block because <laughs> mm, <laughs> they're the probably like, squirrels. where's the food? <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to work, uh, I mean, used to live um, at first hill in Seattle <clears throat> and I would walk to work a lot. And on my walk to work, these squirrels were so tame because so many people would come out and feed them. Uh-huh. There was one little squirrel was about the size of a cat. It was huge. Wow. <laughs> and he, and so I made the mistake of going, you know, 
and it would come up to me and he would stand on my shoe and look up at me and wait for it, you know, and then I didn't have anything. And so he would start. Tick, tick, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I started carrying peanuts <laughs> with me Jeez. and uh, yeah. fattening him up even more. So <laughs> I was guilty too, but he was so adorable. <laughs> yeah. Folks, that's where the Mississippi squirrel revival comes in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh they're so it's so adorable though yeah, it's funny it's like my backyard has become my new tv and so much happens that you weren't aware of when you were you know outside the house and everything but now it's like <laughs> little things in quarantine become or lockdown little things in lockdown become big things and and suddenly you know and my neighbor, I'm always talking about these chickens. My neighbor has these three chickens and they come over every day and they stay in my yard. <laughs> they love you. <laughs> and, uh, and like today, you know, I'm washing the dishes and I see two of them. I'm like, I haven't seen Miss Brown today. <laughs> it's, like this, it's like a weather update. Like, Where's Miss Brown? Oh, she's okay. <laughs> Back to you, Ted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm slowly going insane. That's okay. <laughs> You're with us all here. <laughs> Believe me. Mm -hmm. Like the new reality. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what it is. It's like the drunk raccoon. There was a raccoon that looked like it was drunk the other day. It just kept, you know, waddling around. I was like, I was wondering if he kind of got into some, some fruit Something. that had been, oh. you know, fermented a little bit because that's was... what happened to a squirrel one time oh yeah but oh, uh I, I followed him out and and just watched him but he was kind of slurring all over the all over the place and but then he jumped up on the fence and and uh you know kind of ran away so mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep my eye out hopefully he was all right <laughs> yeah but well, you know you don't want to go up there and cuddle him and, yeah better fermented fruit than like antifreeze or something yeah right? poison yeah. exactly yeah it scares me yeah you can't cuddle them you know they just rip your face off but you know <laughs> are you okay baby i know <laughs> yeah it's like why are they so fuzzy if i know how to touch them so not fair i know because <laughs> it's like nature bears. is cruel mm -hmm. you see these mm -hmm. cute little bears they're so oh they're so cute you know but mm -hmm. no don't don't hug the bear <laughs> yeah, right i had to tell myself that in alaska it's like oh, cause the, cause one just like walked in front of us we're just yeah. walking um up to this uh oh we were walking up to this it was a uh, some museum or something by a glacier that was it, it was by a glacier and oh, we're walking up the road to this and this black bear just comes out of the woods walks in front of us and i'm like oh bear and i'm gonna cuss <laughs> i want to hug <laughs> It's like, a no, little, Jane, it's a don't. little concerning, right? Because we just, we're not encountering nature that often. And then we're like, what we've learned is just watching them on TV or something <laughs> really removed. And yeah, yeah, it's really easy to forget that they're really strong and don't want to be touched. <laughs> and this is an unpredictable wild animal. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> it is scary. Yeah. Carry snacks, lots of snacks. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And or running a, shoes. Mm -hmm. Or a very, a very slow friend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Me. Yeah. No, it'd be June's me. nature tips. <laughs> no, because if I go there with, you know, my friends, you know, I'm the slow friend. So no, don't do that. <laughs> You're terrible. Uh, yes, yes. So, so what, what, um... While we were talking, I'm like trying to find a ghost story to read you guys, but okay. I have so many documents. I'm like looking on my computer. I have so many documents <laughs> that I'm like, oh, where is it? So let's just keep talking and I'll keep looking. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, so now is your home, do you have a ghost in your home? Do well, I remember you thought you, you might have something of, interesting. Most of, most of my homes, I think. Um, That's what I remember the majority more often than not it's very rare for me to to have a very clean home 
Um, but <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. <laughs> Lysol wipes. Yes. <laughs> I, I I have found um I have found that the more I I focus on it, like stay with a paranormal podcast, um, the more I I attract these things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um I very ceremoniously smoke cleanse the entire house, uh, room to room, and then fill it with my own good energy because you don't want to lo- you don't want to leave a vacuum and i think that's something that right. a lot of people uh don't really emphasize enough you don't want to leave a vacuum when you cleanse um you want to fill it up with your own energy and intentions and mm. and light and um i think i'm getting to the point where um it's uh i think it's necessary again um i i saw a few things this week um and and things like to start falling or snagging or not working and um cuz yeah we've we've definitely had to work with the energy that was given us with this home and um you know i i said this at the new moon meetup um i think it's very important to talk to your home and work with it this is where you put all your energy and your time and you know, our houses are made out of wood and other materials, but, uh, you know, if you, you know anything about stone tape theory and stuff, um, if everything doesn't have its own energy, it certainly absorbs other energy and mm-hmm. your home is your sacred space and it should be treated as such. And uh, you should talk to your home and work with it and, you know, touch, touch the walls and listen to it and um, care for it and work together and, um it's kind of a lost art I think but uh yeah there, um I wouldn't say we have any one uh particular entity at the moment but there's definitely been some negative vibes that came with the house and mm. we tend not to talk about it too much because um giving it attention gives right. it energy <clears throat> and I then understand we didn't we don't really mention it on the podcast because we don't want our whole audience thinking about it either <laughs> that's true <laughs> sorry yeah. no 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 i mean i could forget I could that very easily. yeah just totally yeah. forget what she said <laughs> no 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 it's just it, things are much better and um you know we'll be in this this space three years in august um and i really we've even talked about it that this year especially um our yard we have a double lot and the the second lot is all woods and tre- trees remember and uh, the the trees were very disapproving and um pissed off frankly and to be able to to work because the, the, i don't know i don't think the grounds are very respected very much in fact mm-hmm. um there's a lot of trash to prove it that need to be up. and you know stuff like that and um you know, so we've had to work with that a lot. And I really have felt a shift this year. And I don't know if it's just because we are now in this house and we are, you know, solidly here 24 hours a day. Yeah, um, that makes a big difference. You know, yeah. that was one thing we were afraid too, um, that we thought for sure we were going to get a lot more, um, you know, because people who don't know, I'm, I'm in the Advanced Ghost Hunters of Seattle, Tacoma. Yes. And we thought we were going to get a lot more calls and a lot more emails from people since they're in, most people are in their house 24 seven. I thought about that um, too. Yeah. You know, that a lot of people, I mean, <laughs> we have had, you know, quite a few, some of them are, eh, we'll kind mm-hmm. of stay away from them, but, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, I mean, yeah, we have had, you know, but we thought we were getting a lot more, um, mm-hmm then you know because people are now in the house all the time Mm -hmm. practically so Mm -hmm. yeah it's funny that way um I I thought about that as well that like wow I never realized that at 12 30 every day this cabinet opens Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know (laughs) yes so So, yeah I think we are getting that I was uh talking to um, Harvey about it, the remote viewer Harvey 
uh, Alt House, mm. and he uh, he was online doing a session, and I said, you know, I, I kind of felt like my my grandparents were around more, and mm. was that a possibility? And he said that honestly, they were always around, but that since we're here and it's more quiet and downtime and we're more aware of our surroundings, basically, that yeah. you, we're just noticing it more and picking up more, maybe trusting our instincts a little bit more and, and yes. more, just more in tune with it, I suppose. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's funny because it does sometimes require that certain amount of uh, quiet and... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's pretty funny. It's like, well, you know, that's why a lot of people think that, um, you know, ghosts only come out at night, you know, they, they think, <laughs> oh, ghosts only come out at night, you know, that's, you know, really strange or something. I was like, no, it's usually a 24 seven thing. It's just at night. Mm -hmm. We've got all the appliances off. We've got everything turned off. We're sort of settling down. Our senses are more in tune with everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the neighbor isn't usually outside mowing his lawn. Now the kids aren't outside playing. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, you start hearing the things around you and you're like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, there could be a ghost tap dancing in front of you, but you have the TV turned up and you're <laughs> making you know, dinner. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Augie, but it could be a ghost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the nice thing about having a pet. You know, unfortunately, I don't have a pet now where we live. We can't have any animals and also I'm never home. Well, I am now, but never mind. <laughs> 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 someday I won't be home again but um you know it's a nice thing about having an animal you hear these strange noises and you're like oh it's probably the dog and then you look down and see the dog sleeping at your feet and say like, oh <laughs> it's probably the other yeah dog. yeah oh. and our house our house yeah. creaks our house creaks and pops and and I'm sure uh, Oh, and uh, yeah. Oh, a couple months ago, there was like a sonic boom that happened. Oh, um, not because of our house, but I think yeah, something broke some jet, some mm -hmm. uh, military jet or something broke the sound barrier. And it it hit in such a way that it felt like something landed on the house. And Maxwell was like, honey, is that you? And I'm across the <laughs> house. I'm like, no. And um, we looked everywhere and we thought, surely a big pine branch fell on the roof or something nothing nothing and we're just so used to it that we're like oh well yeah i guess we won't know and then the next day i heard about the sonic boom and i'm like that was it it was at the same time i'm like well mm -hmm. we have a real mm -hmm. explanation it's <laughs> yes nice. finally <laughs> yeah oh it can well, be a little um, scary <laughs> in the green witchery yeah. a little bit back to that now okay. i have a lot of rosemary and lavender and and a few other herbs outside uh-huh uh, lemongrass too yeah. how is the best way or what is the best way to harvest and prepare it for uh, you know eventual use oh well yeah i i think that any individual plant um you know, you would have to do the, the natural research of just when's the best time, like with rosemary, you know, or, or like, well, I mean, rosemary, if you want the blossoms, like, like I have here, you know, I took them and dried them and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's perfectly fine. You know, <laughs> witches love jars, right? Where's my, my jar? Right, yep. <laughs> Look, they're just so cute. <laughs> but they are, yes. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> and obviously label if you're good at labeling, but uh, mm -hmm. I think it's fine to harvest things um, with just a good, you know, positive intention right. uh, when you do so and, uh, and a grateful intention and then just, you know, dry it and shelve it for when you do want it. But, you know, there's, there's also power in, you know, paying attention to the moon or, mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. Um, like, is it for a blessing? Is it just for extra oomph, that sort of thing? Uh, are you going to use it to, to banish something? Are you going to use it to attract something? So a waxing or waning moon, that sort of thing. Uh, if, you, if you really want to get um, more detailed with it, because some people just really love the details, right? But I think, I think overall, what I like to encourage people is to just follow their heart and to... Um, Focus is key. Focus and intention. 
I, I did a YouTube video on um, traits that make you an amazing witch. And I really do. And like you expect this list of you're able to conjure, you're able to levitate. And no, it's more about, you know, focus because you you can't manifest something with a lukewarm emotion and a half thought and you're, you know, thinking about what you're making for dinner that night. You know, there, you get what you put into it. So um, I would say, you know, care, care for the plants, you know, put your love and attention into them, work with them, talk to them, be mm -hmm. thankful when you do harvest them. And I really do believe that uh, plants take great joy in their existence of being able to help and, and, um, and aid and, and contribute in the world. And uh, which is why my trees are so pissed off. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I think, you know, it, and I have so many different reference books. I've got witchy apps that I love on my yeah. phone, you know, from phase of the moon to, you know, herb, herbology and things like that. And um, creating a book of shadows is great just for writing down things that you're working with or, you know, things you want to remember and stuff, make it your own, you know, journal. But at the same time, never feel bad about having to look things up again. We're not, we're not powerful encyclopedias. We're, <laughs> we're, we're you know, we're, we live in the moment and we have different intentions as we go. And if you have to look something up, don't, don't shame yourself for that. You know, people put so much pressure and guilt oh, on themselves. And it's like, dude, I know what book it's in. You know? mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I might have to look it up, you know, but um, so yeah, be and be playful about it. Be curious mm -hmm. and just have fun. And, you know, to, to put the spirit of, of working with, with your plants and, or anything you're working with is just, and putting your heart into it, that that's what's important. And and your intentions and your focus and things like that. So um, that's my advice. Just, you know, be focused, have intention, but have fun and be playful and be curious. So wonderful advice. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so I was gonna, I was gonna do something silly. I can't oh. find the ghost story on my, on my computer here, mm -hmm. but I know I have a printout on my desk upstairs. So I was gonna see if I could call Maxwell. <laughs> you would bring it down. He's not listening or watching. Oh I man! Don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Like I said, he had, a, he had dental surgery today. So, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, me out. making a phone call isn't going to interrupt the feed. So, if all oh, of a sudden you, I'm like, you go right just, ahead. just, uh, yeah, come back in. Yeah, we will handle it. <laughs> So yourself. Wendy, how big are your plants? Yeah. <laughs> Should I mute myself? Well, they're almost all uh, taller than me, which was would be a, a little over five foot. Um, wow! The hollyhocks <laughs> have gotten, I would say, eight foot tall, maybe more. Wow. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Are you making marigold, like, little hollyhock dolls? Ooh. You know, have you seen those little hollyhock dolls? I have not seen little hollyhock dolls. You'll you'll have to um you'll have to Google hollyhock dolls. My Jake, friend Jake, you got that link yet? <laughs> <laughs> you make little dolls. Oh really? Cool. <laughs> I am gonna look that up. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty. It's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. My friends are my cousin's grandfather who was on her mother's side, um, we would go over to his house. He was in his 90s. And he would sit out by his hollyhock plant and cut down some some little blossoms and make little hollyhock dolls for us so we could, you know, have that. So it was really, that was cool. really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, multitasking. Jake yeah. is multitasking and um, slacking. <laughs> That's, okay. <laughs> That's okay, Jake. We know, we know. It's all good. I've got it tonight. <laughs> he didn't answer. That's <laughs> oh man! I'm do you want to? Do you want to run up and get it? Because we can, can. Wendy can do a tap dance. Okay. Right. <laughs> go, Wendy. Go. 
<laughs> well, I feel bad about putting him on the spot too. And who knows? Maybe you know, probably laying somewhere with an ice pack on his. No. Well, tell, tell him we hope he feels better. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go Aww. get for the sake of of entertainment. I'm gonna mm-hmm. go. No problem. <laughs> We're good. I'll be right back. Okay. We're good. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> well, June, I am working. Uh, the people at at that one publishing house keep uh emailing me and we're going to have several like voodoo voodoo voodoo, um shows with with some authors of some really they're interesting books um very interesting and then there's oh what was oh lunar lunar magic so moon magic um nice it was fun i i haven't nailed anybody down or, or scheduled them yet but getting to it well, cool. A lot of reading, a lot of uh, networking. Well, I really wish that uh, we could have got Angie, Angie Lee. Um, was Angie Lee right? Our favorite, one of our favorite authors for oh, Angie um, Fox. Fox. Why do yeah. I have Angie Lee in my head? But she wrote some other books that were actually pretty good too. Angie Lee. Oh, but Angie oh okay. Fox actually, um, well, there's Amanda Lee, and I'm actually reading another one of hers right now. So, <laughs> so yes. <laughs> <coughs> Yes, we Back. really. Well, oh, hey, that was quick. <laughs> what I miss? Oh, well, we were just up. talking about authors that we're going to have on our show. We got oh, Voodoo, Voodoo, uh, Orisha's twenty-one something or others, um, and Jake is all in the chat. Ooh, he loves Ooh. Voodoo. Yes, he <laughs> does. <laughs> Lunar magic, I... um, nice. the whole bit. And maybe some fantasy authors as well, just to just to mix it up a little bit. Sounds cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. But. I got I gotta tell Max never mind in case he sees my text. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotta show off my phone. It's funny because like I, I keep it on airplane mode, obviously, when, when I'm in an interview and stuff, and then I turn it on and I get all these text notifications like, bing, 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 are you alive? It's like, stop. <laughs> on for a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. So I got to go story here. Okay, cool. Okay. Ooh. Should we turn we down go. the lights? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I found this one on Reddit. Uh, and it was posted by someone named uh, Cadhick, whatever that means. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have long we have long moved from the house, but this incident still haunts me to this day. This happened about 10 years ago and I'm now 21. We have a small family, my mom, me, and my father. My father worked from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., so he was not home for most of the day. My mom taught at the local preschool and was home by 1 p.m. and I'd come from home Home from school around the same time. One day I came home from school and called out for my mother, but I got no reply. I went into her bedroom and saw her sleeping. I figured she must be tired, so I didn't bother her. I made myself a sandwich and went to her room and slept next to her. She started stroking my hair, not really saying anything, and eventually I fell asleep. It would have been 30 minutes when I heard my doorbell and I got up and saw that my mother was not in bed. I went out and opened the door and I saw my mom still in her work clothes. I was confused and she frantically apologized to me for being late as one of her students had an incident at school and asked me if I had eaten anything. I was confused but replied that I made myself a sandwich. I didn't tell her anything. A few days passed. It was Saturday, so both my parents were home. We planned to go to a park and I jumped into the shower to get ready. I was really excited. I was taking my shower when I heard the bathroom door open. I couldn't see who opened it as the shower curtain was blocking my view. I heard my mother's voice. She put my towel on the stand and I only caught a glimpse of her hand, but she said that we weren't going to the picnic anymore, which made me really sad. I came out of the shower crying and asked my mom why we weren't going to the park. And she asked me who told her, who told me that? I told her that she did. And she said she didn't come inside the bathroom. After this, I heard movements around the house and I heard a woman hum a peculiar tune in my mother's voice, 
but I knew it wasn't my, but I knew it wasn't my mom. Luckily, we didn't stay in that house long and moved out a month later, though I still hear that tune at times, but now I don't see anyone. Mm, that's creepy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like doppelganger. Yeah. Stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've always thought it was curious the the stories about someone hearing their partner's voice or someone that, you know, the mimicking voice is right. Really kind of spooky and and strange, but yeah, pretty pretty common. Yeah. It is. It's really something that 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 actually happened with Ross at the Bel Air house in Ohio. Um, where uh, David Weatherly mm-hmm. was going upstairs and uh, in the house, and all of a sudden, he swears that he saw Ross charging at him from one of the other bedrooms, and he Weird. yelled, he wow. yelled really loud, and he was like, "Whoa!" You know, he's <laughs> like, "What's going on?" And Ross was downstairs. So, um, you know, that was one of those things. And then a little bit later, Dave Sphinx was um, in one of the other rooms and he saw just kind of a shadow like charging at him. Um, but, uh, but yeah, David swears that it was Ross that was charging at him from the room that he slept in and everything. Wow. So that would give me a little creeps. And there was one time too that um, I was in, um, um, Thornwood Castle, which where they filmed Rose, you know, Rose Red, mm. um, if you haven't seen that movie. But yeah. um, Jake, I and Sandy were in that uh, were in there. And all of a sudden, I see Jake going downstairs. And I clearly I saw him going downstairs. And I in my mm. head, I was thinking, I wonder where he's going. Um, I wonder what he's doing. And Sandy comes up to me and says, where's Jake? And I said, oh, I saw him go downstairs. And she's like, I wonder why he went downstairs. So we're walking a little bit. She starts to go upstairs and she's like, no, June, Jake is up here on the third floor. And I was like, and wow. he didn't go downstairs because I saw him. It was him, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, so it's very fascinating to me. It is. It's yeah. like, it makes me wonder. Yeah, because... I mean, well, yeah, to take on someone else's form or or their voice is just really kind of strange. And then you wonder, <clears throat> well, in that situation, is it some kind of, could it be some kind of time loop or yeah. time glitch instead? Or is it a ghost or other entity stumping into, you know, that trickster persona right. or is it easier for them to just mimic yeah. um i mean i don't know you know they don't have bodies anymore they don't have vocal cords you know i mean you, you really think about it it's like or, i i don't know i can't explain anything <laughs> right <laughs> we just love to check it out <laughs> yes yes you know, there was a time in the walker ames house and people mm. swear that it was me that said something and i was with another person and they witnessed that it wasn't me that said anything. Mm -hmm. So, but they heard my voice, you know, asking, um, asking a question to them. And I was like, it couldn't have been me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was very quiet. So, yeah. So it's very, very strange. Fascinating. And it adds this layer of creepy. um, Yes. That it's just in in confusion too, because it's like, why? Just mm-hmm. and then um you know there 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 is the phenomena of uh doppelgangers or vartigas or um you know um just other entities that that it does seem like it was the person carrying something out like the vartiga is said to like come home a couple minutes before the actual person comes home, whether it's just being seen or being heard. And, uh, and it's almost like the intention of deciding to come home or actually on your way home is, is part of that, of, is part of it that triggers it. 
hmm. which is which is strange and um it's just very interesting it, is it just is it a time glitch where you've decided something and um even the guy i forgot his name the guy whose plane was shot down in war territory and he was i forget his name but he was out there in survival mode before he got home a lot of while he was out there a couple of people in his home village reported seeing him walking around town and when he finally did get home safely he said that as a form of escapism he often pictured himself home and oh, how wow. and how you know mentally being there and <clears throat> walking the streets and remembering home is kind of a, a way to stay his resolve and uh, it's really interesting that a lot of people said, yeah, I, I swore I saw him walking down the street when, wow. when he was in here, you know? So it's like, are we, and that's the other aspect. Are we doing this ourselves? Mm -hmm. Are we mm -hmm. PKing ourselves? <laughs> you just I never know. know. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much, you know, we don't understand and we mm -hmm. just don't understand. You know, a lot of people even think having um, the electric voice phenomenon on our tape recorders, audio recorders <clears throat> excuse me my throat is terrible today but um they think a lot of people think that we could be projecting this ourselves onto the digital you know mm -hmm. recorder or you know tape or something that we could be projecting this because our minds are so powerful mm -hmm. but you know i just i don't know if i believe that that's one thing i think is really important that if we have like other groups or something and they share their evidence with us to the same places that we've investigated if they have gotten the same voice or same response mm. or same evp um you know it's a lot harder to you know say that that lean was into that theory your yeah. mind that yeah produced that voice or there's something and or the footsteps or something mm -hmm. but uh but i don't know mm. i guess That's we won't very... really know until it's our time <laughs> At the very least, we can we can probably assume that we're lending our energy to it because we're certainly, you know, I don't really believe in, you know, giving it attention is making it worse like the paranormal activity movies. But at the yeah. same time, there's there's merit to that. You know, con consciousness and observation are a very powerful thing. In fact, mm -hmm. it's it's the whole basis of what we are. So mm -hmm. why wouldn't it? Uh, why wouldn't it have an influence on the the physical realm you know right it's, it's what we're experiencing things through and what makes it all meaningful is that we're experiencing it so and it, something yeah. using our energy <clears throat> to kind of communicate with us or manifest itself or communicate with us and maybe draining our inner no maybe not draining but maybe using our borrowing, energy a little bit boosting borrowing yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why a lot of people are so exhausted after they are in a really active location um, mm -hmm. doing a paranormal investigation. And then all of a sudden they're like, I'm exhausted Whoa. after being in an any active room. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was humans. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Energy vampires. Uh, has, anybody been <laughs> has anybody been watching the show what we do in the shadows me I mean, i'm too. totally hooked now I, just, thank I, you, love, June. <laughs> I love the vampire uh the the energy vampire colin yeah <laughs> <laughs> when he went head to head with that emotional vampire yes. <laughs> That's funny, it was so yes. cute <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I know so many people like that, that just, you, you spend this time around them. And then when you're done, you're like, oh my gosh, Ooh, mm -hmm. I need to, I need to build myself up again. Uh, <laughs> I need yeah, to where's my backyard? Where's my yes. garden? I need some, some good positive influences around me right now. Better yet. Where's that dog that's supposed to be guarding me? <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um well uh jennifer would you be up for uh doing maybe a tarot reading or two oh yeah i have some okay. i always awesome. have cards nearby if cool. anyone if anyone uh want me to pull a, a card or two 
Uh, I can pull one. I can I can pull a series for uh, us right now and okay. say you know we've got our three cards for, <clears throat> for right now. But if anyone in chat, um, if they haven't wandered away, <laughs> no. <feels> like, uh, <laughs> all right, I'll pull three cards. Um, all right. So I've got three cards. This is what okay. I do for Tarot Tuesdays. And this is great okay. because I didn't get to do Tarot Tuesday yesterday. Oh, so awesome. I've got card, I've got card number one. Maybe this is your card. Okay. All right. Card number two. <laughs> and card number three. Hmm. <laughs> so. All right, those of you in chat or that are still listening, watching, what have you, uh, pick a card, any card. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, or all mm -hmm. of them, any combination there. Right, or, right. You know what? I'm going to put a fourth card in here too. So Ooh, card number four. Okay. 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 So does I'm going to go with three. Three? I mm -hmm. was going to go with one. That was okay. speaking to me for some reason. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to pick because I saw them already. <laughs> okay. Jerry, Jerry says two. Okay. Hi, Jerry. We'll cover Thanks them all. for joining. Yes. Yes. Rick says one. Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. He knows Melissa, the drill. Melissa, card four. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Maybe mm -hmm. I put card four out there for her because I felt the need to put out card number four, which is not the typical. Okay. Well, I'll start going through Card number one, if you pick card number one, uh, card number one is temperance. And temperance is, tells us and reminds us to uh, find that happy balance, uh, be wary of extremes, uh, you know, uh, especially emotionally being pulled into one way or the other or um, catching yourself when you do that sort of thing. And uh, it's also, ding, <laughs> it's also um, a good reminder. Uh, the main message of temperance is don't worry, just do. I think that a lot of times we set a plan in action and even though it's going fine, we start overthinking it and we start yeah. unraveling it or uh, picking it apart <laughs> for no reason. And you have to realize that when you start doing that, you're putting that... Uh, frantic energy into your work and when it didn't need to be there. So a lot of times it's best to let go and trust the process and, and catch yourself when you're doing that. And um, when you do catch yourself doing that, just have an open heart and say, you know what, I'm, I'm trusting in this and I'm, I'm putting my, my positive energy into this. I'm not going to brace myself for the worst case because I, I often think and remind myself that worrying is praying for something bad to happen that's uh, true <laughs> yeah. so mm -hmm. you know catch yourself and uh, don't worry just do and everything doesn't have to be in extreme one way or the other hot or cold it you know it you can find that balance in that sweet spot and in, in your work and uh yeah don't overthink okay that's so, nice yeah all right. Everyone's favorite card is card number two, the falling tower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> There's been a lot of jokes about the falling tower uh, being 2020's card. And I actually did write an article about why the falling tower is the best card, actually, for 2020, but not for obvious reasons. Uh, the falling tower, if you pick this card, it usually means that... Um, Things are not working and they're not work, but they're not working for good reason. They're not working because um, a foundation wasn't correct. And that it's, and because it's falling, it is a great time for renewal and reevaluation and building things back up correctly from learning as to why something wasn't working. And instead of taking it as um, either resisting it, that it's happening or um, being upset all the time. And it's fine, it's obviously fine to have an upset reaction to something that is crumbling around you. But uh, the real focus and reminder of the falling tower is that this is an opportunity to do things better and to evaluate why something wasn't working. And it's actually rather exciting to think that um, 
you know, things aren't working right now, but um, you, you can build them to and be in a better position than you ever would have been if things had continued down that course. So uh, really it's about focusing on that aspect of it and, and taking control and, and having that honest truth with yourself as to uh, what wasn't working. And, you know, sometimes it's like when things fall apart, there's, you can usually, when you're honest with yourself, be like, uh, I wasn't happy anyway. <laughs> you know? right. or I knew, I knew it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. And uh, we tend to ignore that little voice in our head. That's telling us that mm, maybe, and you're like, Shh, no, no, it needs to work. It needs to work. I'll make it work. Mm -hmm. And then we end up hitting a wall or something. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's the falling towers is really a great reminder that um, if it didn't work, realize why and learn that lesson. And it doesn't have to be a painful lesson. It's as painful as you make it. But uh, good things, amazing things can come from it because you can start all the better from your experience and, uh, and uh, create something beautiful. So it's not as scary as the card makes out with the mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Card number three tonight is the devil. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. And another popular <laughs> card. <laughs> it's also another card that I happen to like. Um, mm -hmm. It is a reminder that um, to be mindful of how you talk to yourself. Um, oftentimes we will talk to ourselves much harsher than we would ever talk to anyone publicly, let That's alone so a true. good friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would, we say things to ourselves, you know, like you're not good enough. This is never going to work. You're stupid for trying. Why are you doing that? Who would you ever say that to? And so uh, the devil card reminds us that to be gentle with ourselves. And if you're not your own cheerleader, who's going to be, and you deserve yeah. to, really be in a spot where you can support yourself and realize that we all have fears and reservations and making those choices or using that voice um though fear is there to protect us normally fear has nowhere to go so it's clinging to something and um usually we tend to beat ourselves up and be harsh and overcritical when really um we should be kind and we should be self-supportive and it's you know it it can be very very hard and challenging but it's certainly something um we should all be reminded of and do and it's also a card that allows you to check in to see how kind are you being with yourself in the aspect of are you getting enough sleep are you eating healthy things are you know how are you damaging yourself in in that way like well, how are you holding yourself back how are you suppressing yourself how are you damaging yourself um so i think that we can all really take a deep breath and an evaluation and be like you know i i run myself through the ringer in more ways than one and you know i i, I should just be kinder and and be nicer and to myself and mm -hmm. treat your, talk to yourself as if you are your best friend because you should you really should be and you deserve that and and it's super important and so catch yourself if if you just tend to you know be the overthinker or or the person who's just you know your harshest critic you don't need a harsh critic <laughs> you know <laughs> You don't. I mean, we all think, oh, the challenge is great, but it's like, no, you move forward with your, your positivity and let your heart guide you rather than your your fears shrink you. And, and don't live small, you know, live right. big, live big, do not shrink, mm -hmm. be big, be bold and, and support yourself and, and yeah. have fun because gosh, <laughs> No one else is going to shove you out the door and tell you to do that. You, know? <laughs> you got to do it yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So card number four this evening oh, is the fool, which is the first card in the tarot deck, zero. And hmm. uh, it's about new beginnings and encouraging us to be spontaneous and adventurous and try something new and um it also encourages beginner's mind 
And beginner's mind is the concept of even though you may have done something every day for the past few years at like your commute to work or where your desk is, that sort of thing, we tend to link things together and think that it's the same thing, same thing. When in actuality, every moment is a unique moment that is not tied to the moment that was previously and like what if you took another way to work or what if you're while stopped in traffic you look over and there's this beautiful weed but it's growing a flower that you weren't noticing before like it's a completely different experience and uh it just encourages us to to shake things up and to not get stuck in mental ruts where because our brain does this thing where you think you know something so it could shut off the the need to analyze and participate to reserve that mental power. But uh, sometimes it's at a cost where we're not uh, participating and we're just going through the motions of something. Um, and I think right now, especially since our lives can be rather monotonous, I'm not leaving my house very often, but you know, enjoying my morning tea as if I've never drinking it before or looking at the sunrise, which is completely different from yesterday, you know, seeing it as something new, you know, how do the birds sound at this exact moment, you know, that sort of thing. It just encourages us to realize that we're throwing away these moments that could really be something special if, if we want them to be. And obviously it's exhausting to think every moment is special. But at the same time, if we're stuck in this gray or beige zone of uh, tuning out, um, we're losing something there. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you can't shake it up, pay attention to the newness that is everything. But at the same time, you know, read a new book, take an online course, try something new, wear something different, you know, that sort of thing. Just shake it up, find that spontaneity, find that love for life, begin something new. And it just encourages you to always continue to grow and, and continue to experience things and have adventures. So That's yay. great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All of those have something to say tonight. So that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Melissa says maybe she meant all four cards. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gina says this is one of those synchronicity moments. <laughs> ah, that's how we mm -hmm. have. Gina, mm -hmm. what did you pick? I want to know. <laughs> Let's see. She picked number four. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, shake it up. Do Rick was saying um, so 100% question was reference how to get back into astral travel. Um, oh. He had a projection today, but popped right, popped out right away out of fear. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's funny. Um, talk about synchronicity. I said at the last meetup on Monday that I asked anyone if they had any supernatural metaphysical goals, and astral projection is something that I've always been very intrigued by, but have never seriously tried to trigger it myself and um i've had some weird dreams that are very questionable but very very far and few between but it's something that i really want to explore as well and i definitely understand that fear component right component because you use analyzing is probably the last thing you should be doing yeah. in that sort of circumstance <laughs> and it's well you know it's just the thought of letting go like yes. that i mean yes. that's a, a really big thing i know in my life and a lot of people's lives just mm -hmm. you know just letting letting go mm -hmm. and in the free fall basically yeah mm -hmm. yeah that yeah. would terrify me i think i don't know but yeah I i've always been thought... intrigued by it too but yeah, I often thought that I don't think I'm a good candidate uh, to be hypnotized because I don't feel that I could work with someone enough to lose that level of self-consciousness of what's going on right. as well as lose that level of control. I have a hard enough mm -hmm. time getting on an airplane, let alone like <laughs> I'm the same that. way. <laughs> <laughs> take mm -hmm. the wheel to like my you know my consciousness and, and guide me through something so yeah, yeah that, those are tough challenges to go through 
Yeah, you wouldn't believe the fear I used to have when flying. I mean, it oh, was me a too. horrible fear. Xanax, I, I can't even tell you how many Xanax I used to take, which is probably not safe. <laughs> 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 I took so many and it barely even calmed me down. You know, I think I took 60 milligrams, six zero milligrams, and you're only supposed to take five milligrams. Right. <laughs> Oh I didn't know word. that. Well, you time. got, you yeah. have so much adrenaline Anxiety, going yeah. on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Nothing's going to help. <laughs> but now I don't take anything because I've been flying so much. Well, I was, you know, now probably if I have to get back on again, I'll probably have to get <laughs> some yeah. Xanax again. But hey, just let me in the co-pilot seat. It'll all be good. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, none of us are really flying a lot nowadays. We're all no. going to relearn. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we're but, just um, driving. When, when it comes to astral projection, I think how I'm going to find some really good, I've read books, but I think I'm going to find some good guided meditations on it. But I also want to explore the idea of just popping a hand out or popping a foot out, you know, mm-hmm. why does it have to be the whole body? <laughs> right. <laughs> I had some interesting experiences, um, a while ago now i was um i was rear-ended i was in a car accident and that left i'm good i'm good now um Mm -hmm. uh it left me with a lot of back pain and whiplash and uh this is actually good it's a good origin origin story um i was in a lot of pain and you know you can't get away from back pain there's just no escaping it and in the past i have had success with um randomly just intuitively through caring um healing healing loved loved ones um with healing touch and i was in so much pain and so desperate that um i thought oh my gosh i'm just gonna try this i'm just gonna try this and i put my hands on the back of my neck and just poured as much love and energy and just you know, talking to my muscles and opening it up and just focusing on that. And um, the next day I had absolutely no pain in, in my neck. Wow. My back still hurt, but my neck was fine. And and that's when I really started exploring uh, Reiki and, and healing because it was at this point I was being forced into a necessity because uh, Christmas was coming, you know, I'm the one who usually puts the tree up and big into decorating, you know, buying gifts and everything. And like, you know, and I could move for an hour every day and be out of commission and stuff. And so that really propelled me into this healing journey. And I was doing all kinds of healing meditations and chakra work. And, um, it was during that time that I had some weird experiences where, you know, I'm laying down fully in the zone and all of a sudden it felt like my leg shifted out of itself. Oh, oh no. It was my whole body. My whole body was suddenly 45 degree angle and back, like no shift in between. It was just there and back. Oh, wow. And I was like, what is that? And another time my head did it. And that's when I was like, oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> and at the same time, there was, I was, um, I was seeing a lot of more paranormal activity, lights and see and hearing things. Uh, I had a sleep paralysis moment. Mm. Um, at one point, something was walking around the bed as well, all these different experiences. And I feel like the more you dive into those realms, letting go, um, you know, with astral projection or healing work or anything, that's when things start to really get interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I don't know. I don't know what the moral of my story is, but (laughs) Rick's Rick's, uh, comment kind of propelled me to to talk about all that stuff. So yeah, it's all very interesting. And Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny how life can get to the point where you're talking about stuff that you know, if you were in the middle of Target, you would never hear these conversations. You know? No, <laughs> right, right. no. But maybe Walmart, becomes, maybe yeah. Walmart, yeah. but not Target. <laughs> it becomes your life. You know, it mm-hmm. it becomes your life, and it's it's very very interesting. 
on uh, what you focus on and what happens because you focus on it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and another reason why I, I started the forest parlor is just because focus is so key and there's so much focus on negativity right now when there's so, there's such a spectrum that you can play with and uh, it doesn't even have to be metaphysical. It can just mm -hmm. be a different angle of looking at, at the world that everyone else can. And I don't know, I think, I think it, can just, it can be as magical as you wanna make it. And uh, I've always been a really shy person and uh, I've always kind of kept to myself and I just really feel that I'm at a point where Whenever I feel like, um, you know, like the new moon meetup, like the first time I put it out there, people might not have showed up and it's like, oh, well then, you know, mm -hmm. these are things I've always done by myself. It would be great if people wanted to join me, but if they don't, I, you know, I still have myself and, you know, it, it right. has nothing to do with me. Maybe they're busy. Maybe right. you know, something else is going on. And, <clears throat> and when I get shy you know i just i tell them i tell myself you know it it's not about me <laughs> it's about everything else and giving people the venue to uh be real and and explore some truths and be there for each other that's what's important it's not about me at all and and so uh, true and the the shyness kind of goes away and and when you know you can definitely you know, the things I'm talking about tonight, the ghost and astral projection healing work that is definitely leaving yourself open for critique, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And leaves you vulnerable in that aspect. And when I think about that and I think about those reservation and fears, I just think, you know what? I'm coming from my heart and a very open heart and nothing can touch that. And it, if it doesn't resonate with someone, then it's not for them. It has That's nothing right. to do with me again. And I think that a lot of people, you know, we all have our reservations about things. What will people think? And we just have to remind ourselves that, you know, where are you coming from? You're coming from your heart and, and you want to share your heart with other people. And, and that's, that's the real thing that's the truth there and if it doesn't work for someone then it doesn't jive it's no big deal it's true and if anyone you know i have certainly <clears throat> i've certainly got a few critiques online because it's online but it's just like oh <laughs> yeah it's like whatever <laughs> i've offended your sensibilities <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> what will i ever do exactly <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know, I wish you well. Exactly. Well, you do you. You do you, yes. <laughs> I wish you happiness and, and yeah, yeah, go away. <laughs> <laughs> you go do your thing mm -hmm. over here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it looks like we have reached our end. How about that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. <clears throat> Do you have, um, I know you touched on it before, but uh, can you let people know again how they can get in touch with you or how they can join you? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Well, again, I got I to gotta plug out Iconic because it's yes. dear to my heart and it's still very much uh, relevant. Uh, you can find Autonic on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. If you search for Autonic Society, you'll find Fun our Facebook group. Yes. And our, yeah, and you'll you'll find our group and our Facebook page, and uh, you can find us at autonicsociety.com has every link. But we're on every uh, podcast app that you can think of. If you do a search for mm -hmm. Autonic, you can find us. If you like, um, what is it? A uh, strange history, weird science, and the paranormal. Uh, you can join me and Maxwell in our parlor for that. And then my offshoot of that is the forest parlor. If you're interested in anything in metaphysical conversations, in self work, in, in healing work, uh, or just being part of our, our new moon or full moon or seasonal meetups. Uh, it's something that I organize online and it's kind of new. It just started this year. Mm -hmm. um, my YouTube channel is so new that I, don't qualify for a custom URL yet because it hasn't been 30 days. Mm -hmm. So hopefully um, within a day or two, I can get um, um, 
youtube.com slash C slash um, the forest parlor as a right. channel name. But I do witchy, witchy YouTube videos, uh, anything from how to work with moon water to how to build an altar, what makes you an amazing witch. I do unboxing videos for witch boxes that I subscribe to, uh, that sort of oh, thing. Oh, neat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> I got a new one for for June for July for Leo in August coming up uh, that I have to do an unboxing video for, and I think I'm gonna go through that for the uh, first harvest of the year meetup on August first. I'll go through my goodie box and, okay. and do it. nice, yeah. And I was thinking about making a, a corn dolly for the first harvest as well, and. Um, I'm encouraging beer, bread, and mead. <laughs> it's a uh, it's, it, right, it's a national mead day or something like that. I would that think it also, is, which it? is not an accident. Someone knew what they were doing. <laughs> yes, they did. But, um, oh, yeah, I love you, honey mead. Oh, honey me mead. Too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Mike I, Nichols, oh, if you watch or listen, um, make yes. note of that day. <laughs> yes. Uh, the forest parlor.com is my website. If you're interested in, uh, divination and tarot readings, I do, I do tarot readings. I do chakra readings. I do energy work, which is a great pairing with that. Um, you can read all about that at the forest parlor. There's also an events tab under the blog. If you want to see what the current event is going on and there's a sign up there. I'm also on Facebook and there is a Facebook group as well um if if those kind of things speak to you but no pressure <laughs> <laughs> lovely I, yeah that's wonderful well thank you so mm -hmm. much jennifer for being with us mm -hmm. this has been a very nice show just really really enjoyed it I'm right a little more re yes i love and just, relaxed <laughs> i love coming off of something like this and being like wow that was just so lovely you know? <laughs> I blame, I blame, mm -hmm. I blame the burning stuff now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, that that's wonderful. When in doubt, light something on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh yes. my God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> yes. Jennifer said. Mm -hmm. Don't try this at home, folks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I don't have it, anything booked for next week, so stay tuned. I'll get something. You'll figure it out. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. June, parting thoughts? Oh, just everyone, please stay safe yeah. and be kind. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be kind to each other, be kind to yourself. Exactly. And if you can't, try your best. Exactly. Go for a <laughs> <Just> walk. Just try. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well, everyone, have a great week, a great weekend. Let's like they said, stay safe, stay, stay social distanced. Um, Wear your try mask. not to let the G men get you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, anyway, um, yeah, and we will talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. 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 Stop.